Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I watched my 17-year-old's baseball game last night. He went deep to center field. If he had hit that ball, that ball had to have been 300 and maybe 330. I, I can't remember. It was deep, but it was the center, dead center field. If he had hit it to left or to right, it's over the fence. It would have been a three-run shot. This kid's bigger than I am now. He's about six. I think he's passing six four about now. I'm, I think this kid's going to be anywhere from six five to six six, and he is a he he works out two times a day. This kid's a monster now. I'm going to send you a picture of him. Um, <laughs> put a picture out there. I've never really put one out. I don't think you've seen. I think I showed video of my. This is how long I've been doing this now. Five years ago. When he was just a little kid, it seems like he's playing little league, and this is when I started this channel. Time flies, doesn't it? All right, John Deaton. I want to, there was the, the the clips I played from yesterday where John Deaton was interviewing with Link to. I got some more clips from that, and I just wanted to reiterate just how close we are. This is John's timeline on when this ju the judge's decision comes this out. This week, next week, certainly uh, within thirty days. All right. Okay. It then there was this clip. This, this is a great clip. It's 300. I'm not going to play the whole three minutes, but I do want to take you to about here. So he kind of tells you how he thinks this thing is going to end. He's basically in this clip says that he th he's con he's 100 percent confident Ripple would win it at, at Supreme Court and uh, on appeal. And so and so he's making the point that for that reason, he knows Gary does Gary Gensler does not want to go that far because he wants the trophy for himself. Well, here's what he says at the end about how he thinks this is going to turn out. Know that you're really, really likely going to lose on appeal, but can get a political win right now. What do you think Gary Gensler is going to do? And what I mean by a political win is the best thing the SEC would have if they lose is the threat of appeal. And so do I think they will threat? to appeal it? Sure. And what would happen? They would use the threat of an appeal to try to negotiate a settlement post Judge Torres's decision where they get to say, okay, Ripple will get, we'll waive our appeal. We'll agree that Judge Torres's decision, that secondary market sales are not securities and that uh, your uh, ongoing and future sales are not securities. If you agree to pay $25 million, pick a number, right? And Ripple may very well entertain that. And then Gary Gensler could say, yes, we, we, we got a victory. We got millions and millions of dollars. But more importantly, he gets to go after his other targets in present day. And, wow. that's, the and that's why I think that's what I think Charles Hoskinson was pissed off about. I think Charles Hoskinson heard whispers of this thing going in this direction. That's the issue. And so um, Ellie uh, Terrett said that they are even beefing up the crypto enforcement at the SEC now, today, even though a year ago they doubled the SEC crypto enforcement. And so why would you appeal it, take the risk of a loss, you know, when you could get that political win? And Gary Gensler doesn't care about the law. He doesn't care about investors. He cares about himself and his political ambition. So, so that's what. All right. So you can kind of see. Now, um, there is on Link2, who is one of my sponsors, there is Ripple on the platform. And as he said, I mean, it's literally days, weeks, by the end of the month kind of thing when he thinks this is over. And I believe, I mean, I'm assuming that, that once this is over, Ripple is probably going to head to IPO and they're going to, they're gonna. It's gonna be a lot tougher to get those. We sh we shall see. All right, um, Jack Mullers, who the, I call him the kid. We always see the CNBC trotting this kid out, and it's never made any sense to me. He's always in a hoodie. It's almost like they're marketing. Well, 
Remember who these people are. Never forget who these people are. They are no different than Gary Gensler. They work with Gary Gensler. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Gary Gensler only goes and does interviews with them. He goes on and they, they, they set it up for him. Remember, these are the same people that Jay Clayton went to and became a contributor. Instead of them asking him any questions about Ethgate, he became a contributor. And I'm assuming a paid contributor at CNBC. These people are always on the same team, so you have to ask yourself the question. Right in the middle of the, the, the banking problems and the banks going down and all, why would these people be propping be inter inviting some young kid that represents Bitcoin out onto the, unless, unless they had some kind of a plan to make this the, this is what it feels like to me because they did the same freaking thing to Sam Bankman free. They build this up and then once it all falls apart, they say, well, see, you can't trust all these kids and this, this, this upstart stuff. They don't know what they're doing. We, the Federal Reserve and the, and the, and the banking system, it's, all, it's been around for 100 to 200 years. We, it's here to protect you. You can't trust the, it's almost like setting them up to, to I mean, what's the old saying? Uh, uh, they set, um, uh, they build you up and then they take you down. I mean, that's how, that's how it works. Um, and look, the kid, He's got his own company. I'm not saying anything bad about the kid other than the fact that it just something doesn't feel right about this whole thing. It's going to be fun watching him learn his hard lesson, though, because here's what he said back on in November 2020. After years of watching CNBC Fast Money interview, interview idiots like Roger Ver and promote bullshit like BCH and XRP, there is something satisfying about this interview. He's taught this is an interview with the cyber hornet Michael Saylor. <laughs> embarrassing and there's another one I mean I think that guy's got some loose screws um, as well but so here they are they have and and I said the sa same feds he's talking about now think about this well just listen to what he what he says here and remember as you listen to this do you think that the Fed is gonna listen to this and not say oh okay like the government's going to tell me how the dollar is inflating based on a basket of instruments. Like my Netflix subscription or my Caesar salad doesn't actually tell me how well the dollar is doing or how much it's being devalued. Miami real estate does. Bitcoin does. Bitcoin's up over 50% this year. Yeah. You're telling me that the dollar's not inflating? You're out of your mind. I'm not listening to that. The, the, the Fed and the whole monetary system is based on trust, and they constantly, they constantly break, uh, break that trust. It'd be the equivalent of there's a fire outside of my house. I smell the smoke, and someone's telling me, no, 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 it's just a bunch of teenagers putting on a bonfire. Okay, but I hear one one siren. I hear one police siren. Yeah. Are you sure it's a bonfire? Yeah, yeah, it's a bonfire. Now I hear 10 sirens, 100 sirens. Now my whole community is running out. I'm not going to get up and look outside the window, Kelly, and see what's going on. I don't believe them for a second. You've got to be absolutely crazy to believe the Federal Reserve right now. They're full of it, and I don't have to because I own Bitcoin. There's no one that can deflate my instrument. I get to hold it, save in it. I know the monetary policy. I sleep like eight. There's a, folks, there's a reason that CNBC is having this kid on to talk like this and it's and the reason has nothing to do with them loving Bitcoin it has to do with this kid being a poster child for something I'm telling you this this sent my antenna up big time because here's the dirty secret the feds he's talking about they know exactly who Satoshi Nakamoto Nakamoto is and he is a very naive young man they will kill it if it becomes anywhere near the kind of threat that he thinks it is. And then he, this is the other part of the interview. And I said, unfortunately, I think they're building this kid up the way they did Sam Bankman Freed. Remember who these people work for. Remember this? Do you remember any of this? Sam Bankman Freed is really becoming the industry's lifeline during a crisis lately. I'm fascinated, endlessly fascinated with Sam Bankman frieds role in all of this. You've been now described as the JP Morgan, if you will, of the crypto business. A lot of people have called you um, the savior of crypto, the patron saint of crypto, the Michael Jordan of crypto, if you will. Sam Bankman Freed. Sam Bankman Freed, the JP Morgan of Freed. SBF, JPM. Do you know us? Do you think that that was by accident? No freaking way. Now, 
this this goes into it too. Today they're saying that George Soros is having health problems. And I said, does this mean his plans to destroy America are shelved for a while until his heirs can get up to speed on the Dr. Evil plan? Well, remember this? No, remember, Sam Bankman, these people propped Sam Bankman Freed up, folks. They were told to prop Sam Bankman Freed up. That didn't just happen. Remember this? Congressman Tom Emmer claims that SEC Chairman Gary Gensler knew about FTX. Of course he did. They all did. Remember this? Bombshell exclusive. Biden's SEC chair, Gary Gensler, deleted key de details of meetings with George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and Nancy Pelosi. I didn't mean to say her name. I meant to say a president's wife, a former president's wife. Um, George Soros and lunatic whack job, crazy person. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, Nancy Pelosi. Well, Gary Gensler was hiding meetings with George Soros. Why would you be meeting with George Soros? George Soros has made his name by destroying countries' currencies. Remember this? I remember this. This Remember when the Luna collapse happened? It was before the SBF collapse. And Coindesk ran this, that this was a Soros-style attack. Remember this? BitBoy, who was all over the SBF thing, BitBoy went and he, he made the comment um, that that SBF Alameda was behind every single crash. So if, if you remember, there were several crashes like Celsius and Luna and all these. Now, so you got Gary Gensler hiding meetings with George Soros, who specializes in collapsing currencies. And then you've got him meeting with FTX. You got CNBC propping up FTX like he's the, he's the face they want on crypto. Then they destroy it. <laughs> They do, first, first, there's all these collapses like Luna, which was a Soros-style attack. I mean, come on, folks. Come on. Are we kidding here? I don't feel guilty because I'm engaged this is in George an Soros, immoral activity, which is not him meant Gary Gensler's to have anything to do with guilt. Part of the reason he is so rich is that the Soros hedge funds operate... All right. And, of course, the, the sound is deleted on some of that stuff. Okay. And then I go to this, folks, because Ashley Prosper had put this out. Satoshi Nakamoto is anonymous, not to Homeland Security. We've got, we've shown you the video. He or they hold approximately $1.1 million in Bitcoin, currently worth approximately $27.5 billion. At any time, the wallet could be emptied, creating huge sell pressure and loss of confidence. What happens then? Does anyone really believe that Homeland Security, after meeting with the four Satoshis, where th this thing could affect monetary policy. Does anybody be really believe that they would not immediately have re reported those findings to the Fed, the White House, Congress, SEC, CFTC, every other government agency dealing with finance? And this is the key point. Bitcoin will either be allowed, which is possible, it'll be allowed to live, or it will be killed. They all know who Satoshi is. Make no mistake about that. So the question becomes, if the plan is to kill it, I'll tell you what I would do. If my plan was to kill Bitcoin at the right time, I'd do exactly what they're doing. And you know what else I'd do? I'd be, I, I would, who would I, who else would I consult with other than George Soros, who's the eminent expert at destroying currencies? It, it, <laughs> he's the man. And we saw him, Glenn Beck, a few years ago that he was, he'd go out, George Soros would go out and bash Bitcoin, and then he was buying it while he was bashing it. So this is the game they play. And I'm just telling you, nobody else is telling the truth about Bitcoin. All they're talking about is the surface BS. Like, oh, this is going down with the banks. And But you can, how do you go to down with the banks when you can't ignore a video where Homeland Security is admitting that they went and met with, with the four Satoshis? And these people don't even want to acknowledge the video. And that's the tell. And, and let, me, let me reiterate, I don't want anything to happen bad to Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything else. I want all these things to, to live. And I, and I am as, look, I'm no fan of our Federal Reserve and what the government has done to our money. I'm on the same page with the Bitcoin maxis as far as that goes. The problem is... That's not how this story ends because I'm 49 years old. When I was when I was a teenager, I would have been Jack Maulers on steroids. 
And I would have thought that those kind of things are possible, but that's not how this thing, they'll bring out the tanks and the guns, as Brad Garlinghouse has said before, before that kind of thing is allowed. And so as an adult, I know that we have to put our dollars beside, or our pennies beside their dollars, as, as like Brad Kahn says, because that's the smarter play. Now, and then Robert Kiyosaki, who is a Bitcoin guy, they're, they're getting right over the target here and they don't even know it. The fact that we hear rumors that Australia, New Zealand, and Japan are moving in that direction, it's just more nails in the coffin of the Western Germany. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. And yes, if all of a sudden the majority of the world is trading in a new settlement currency and the dollar is rendered uh, worthless, yeah. um, either the U.S. has to pivot and do something of their own with the gold-backed, like we talked about before, a gold-backed International Monetary Fund special drawing rights, or we'll get with the game and in order to trade with oh, the majority right. of the world, it will be in a new currency. And here's the point, folks. The World Reserve currency status is on the line. That's our entire way of life. And we are supposed to believe that the USA didn't have a plan. My igloo in South Georgia is still for sale. If you believe that, I believe they've always had a plan. Just by coincidence, right in the middle of this banking crisis, um, Fed now instant payments are coming and CBDCs will follow. And the FDIC uh, ensures up to, they've created a new symbol that looks like the infinity symbol per depositor, per FDIC insured bank. Then Jeremy Hogan had put this out. Ripple finally filed the Voyage, Voyager bankruptcy judge's decision. The judge uses abnormally strong language stating that the U.S. regulators themselves cannot even agree on, the, on what criteria to use in deciding whether crypto is a security. Fair notice. We are getting close. And then XRP crypto will 420 million XRP bought by massive whales as price braces for next move. And then Eleanor Terrett, she says, what a coincidence, um, just finished writing an article about the Ripple versus SEC government uh, case on a train to DC. I walk off the platform at Union Station to see that crypto means business. And then she says, so I learned this evening that the SEC building is actually connected to Union Station. That's some strategic product placement from Ripple right there. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family you got to look a little deeper on this whole Bitcoin thing because it doesn't make sense. That the same people who are all about that Federal Reserve and, and the QE this, QE that, and all that, same people all of a sudden are propping up some kid in a, in a hoodie to act like Bitcoin's legitimate? No, it's more like they're making fun of Bitcoin and setting somebody up is what it is.